So, if you watched the last few videos, you know that we've mostly covered the Chandni Chowk part of Old Delhi, which is majorly what there is to Old Delhi. But in this video, uh, we've just come slightly north of Chandni Chowk. So towards the northeast of Chandni Chowk, there's this road called the Lothian Road and that's the road on which you'll find this very interesting looking red building. This building is actually supposed to be where the old St. Stephen's College was and it's right next to this building which is even more interesting. So this is actually one of the oldest churches in Delhi. It's called the St. James Church. So St. James Church was established almost 200 years ago, as you can see, and it was built by James Skinner, who was within the East India Company Army, and before that he was with the Marathas in the Maratha Army. Uh, because he was an Anglo-Indian, he was born to a British father and uh, an Indian mother in Kolkata. So he sort of was able to serve in both. So it's been a bit of a bummer. We've not been allowed into the church because there's some ongoing construction work. So unfortunately, we cannot really look at it from inside. So now I am walking on this lane which is right next to the St. James Church and I'll tell you a little story. So it's believed that the church was built because James Skinner was once badly injured in battle and he prayed to God to save his life. And continuing the earlier story, he said that if he survives he'll build a church in Delhi and that's what he did right here. So we are taking this mini tea break. <laughs> but yeah, James Skinner, he was the Anglo-Indian born to a British father and an Indian mother. He built that church and even today there's actually a regiment in the Indian Army called the Skinner's Horse, which is named after him. All right, so we've fueled ourselves on this sunny, slightly hot morning. <laughs> and there you go. I think you see a little bit of that William Fraser's bungalow, another very famous building in this area, which was built just behind the St. James Church. And that building which so it has this magnificent dome which i'm not sure if we'll be able to clearly see but that building with the magnificent white dome is actually called william fraser's bungalow william fraser was an influential british person of that time there you go i think you see a little bit of that William Fraser's bungalow <laughs> and Fraser was actually a bureaucrat so he was what would today be called an IAS officer kind of so I think we are kind of suffering from <laughs> suboptimal luck this morning <laughs> so we could not make it inside St. James Church because it was under construction and Probably nobody can make it inside William Fraser's bungalow because it's now a government building. So yeah, we'll just walk around and explore the area.
So I think a general perspective to keep in mind when you're in this area is that because this is on the outskirts of Old Delhi or Chandni Chowk, specifically to the north of Chandni Chowk, most of the areas that you'll see here are actually built by the British. So these are comparatively new and I think this building as well, this very interesting building that you see, would probably go back around a hundred years. So of course if you're on the outskirts of Old Delhi, you would see one of the 14 gates <laughs> and this one is the Kashmiri gate. Where do these gates come from? <laughs> well, Chandni Chowk was a walled city, so these are the gates in that wall. This wall of Shah Jahanabad also happens to be a place where a lot of fights were fought because, of course, this was a protective wall and especially in the north, which is where we are right now, the Kashmiri Gate area, was where a lot of fighting happened in 1857 when the Indians actually revolted against the British Indian Army and this board that you see in front of me is actually uh, what mentions a bit of history related to that event. So yeah, maybe you could go back and pause it and read a bit. So while this wall of Shah Jahanabad is around 300, a little more than that years old, that hole that you see was actually caused by an explosion which was intentional in that fight for India's independence in 1857. References to that first war of Indian independence in 1857 and also the first establishments of the British are found quite frequently if you are walking in this area which is just to the north of Shah Jahanabad and this is one of them. This is the Nicholson Cemetery named after John Nicholson who died during that war of 1857. It's so extremely interesting how all these places and all the history is so closely connected. Of course, as we walk in this area today and think about all these people who lost their lives and who are buried here, the mood is a little somber and sad, maybe a little contemplative about the times that those were. But if we talk about history and its interconnectedness, uh, where we were earlier, which was the wall of Shah Jahanabad, was where quite a few battles happened during the mutiny of 1857. And in one of those battles, John Nicholson, who was leading his group of the British Indian Army, fought against uh, the other part of the Indian army that was rebelling and he ended up dying in that battle because he was gravely wounded. John Nicholson uh, was actually buried here and that's why this cemetery is called the Nicholson Cemetery. In fact, I think his uh, burial and his tombstone is also somewhere in the cemetery but I'm not too sure if I'll be able to capture that and show it to you but of course I'll try. Uh, but yeah going back to the interconnectedness of everything there was old Delhi or Shah Jahanabad that we explored and then there was the boundary to the north that we explored and just to the north of it 
were the first British settlements and also the first British graveyard, which is this one, where the casualties of the War of 1857 are buried. Honestly, it's quite the experience walking around in a cemetery and specifically in this cemetery which has so much of history associated with it, the Nicholson Cemetery where the people who died in the first war of India's independence in 1857 and primarily the people buried here are and were the British. It's, it's so interesting to be walking around here and thinking about those things, but the cemetery is also where this video will end.